Hi, I'm Jeff Kornberg, and on this episode of The Dragon's Tomb, I'm going to be teaching you how to play Betrayal at House on the Hill. In Betrayal at House on the Hill, it's the day of the big wedding, and players take on the role of potential suitors who are fighting over who will get to marry the beautiful bride. It's one of my all-time favorite games because every time you play it, the board is completely different. To set up, place all the location tiles face up on the table and randomly pick one to be your wedding venue. This will be your board for the game, so put all the other tiles back in the box. Maybe you'll get to play with them next time. This is the beautiful bride in her dazzling white dress. Assign one player to play as her and then place her inside the wedding venue. The remaining players choose to be one of these potential suitors. Biff from Back to the Future, Mila Kunis, Elmira from Tiny Toon Adventures, Luigi's Mansion, and Ferris's sister from Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Next, deal every player five wedding event invitation cards. Now you're ready to start playing. The object of the game for the beautiful bride is to successfully marry one of the suitors. The object of the game for the suitors is to be the one suitor who marries the bride. On their turns, the suitors can do one of two actions. One, they can invite people to the wedding. To do this, discard one wedding invite and then roll two dice. Whatever number you roll is how many wedding guests accept your invitation. These multicolored tokens are the wedding guests. They all have the names of different monsters because the setting of the wedding is in Camden, New Jersey. These pentagonal tokens are gifts from the registry. For each guest who accepts your invite, move them and one gift in front of you. The other action the suitors can do is sell back items they've gotten from the registry. If you sell one item, you can take an additional wedding invite card. If you sell five items, one of the bridesmaids joins your party. These larger tokens are the bridesmaids. They have the names of different, even scarier monsters because they're all from Los Angeles. For each bridesmaid you have, you get one additional die for your wedding invite rolls, making it easier to invite more guests. While the suitors take their turns, the bride is busy updating her little black book, which is made up of a tracker for each player. The bride uses them to keep tabs on how good of a partner she thinks each of them would be. Each tracker has four qualities the bride must consider. Speed is how fast a suitor plays in their turn. Might is if the bride thinks they might be the one. Sanity is how sanitary a suitor is. And knowledge is how much a suitor knows about ledges. The higher the bride rates each quality, the better it is for the suitor. Once the suitors have sent out all the invitations, you finally have triggered the wedding. The suitors count how many guests they've invited and add that to the total number of points the bride has awarded them on their tracker. If your suitor has the highest total, congratulations, you've successfully won the right to marry the beautiful bride. Place your suitor into the wedding menu. The game now shifts into two teams, with all the rejected suitors joining together to try and stop the bride and groom. The game has 50 different wedding scenarios, and each one has a different way for the rejected suitors to win. To choose which wedding will be played, the suitors open up the Bachelor Rulebook, where each page lists a different scenario. The suitors will go to the page number that corresponds with whatever day of the month it is. For example, if it's April 11th, they go to page 11. They then read the rules on that page, which will explain how the suitors can stop the ceremony by finding a unique item. Each time you play, the item and how to find it will be completely different. Sometimes you'll have to roll a number to find a ring to stop the wedding, while other times you'll have to roll a number to find an amulet to stop the wedding, while other times you'll have to roll a number to find a puzzle box to stop the wedding. These variables really make each playthrough one of a kind. While the suitors are finding their item, the couple is trying to read their vows as quickly as possible in order to wed. The vows are listed on the 13 omen cards, which foretell the beautiful future of their relationship. If the couple reads all 13 of their vows before the suitors stop the wedding, they successfully marry and win the game. However, if the suitors find their item before the vows have all been read, they use it to stop the wedding, and then they win the game. All in all, this game is a blast to play. I love how most of the times I've played, the suitors get the item they need almost immediately and end the game mere moments after the wedding is triggered. It prevents you from having to come up with any boring strategies and lets you just enjoy the long random first half of the game even more. Also, 
the game comes with this strange slider thing with what looks to be alien hieroglyphics on it. I couldn't figure out what it meant, so if any of you happen to understand it, definitely let me know.